special video today. We are not going to talk about Swift, but instead we're going to talk about Xcode and one of its really like hidden feature and hidden gem. A little side note before we start the video, I hope the title and the miniature made you laugh a little. I can tell you that for my part, I had a ton of fun making them. But let's get back on the topic. So as you've seen from the title, this video is going to be about breakpoints in Xcode. And breakpoints, we are all familiar of them. We know how to use them. So if I click here on this line, I put a breakpoint on this line, which means that whenever my code goes to execute this line, the execution will stop and I will be able to inspect and debug the current state of the program. But what you might not know is that in Xcode, breakpoints have actually a lot more features available. And to get to them, well, you just need to double click on the breakpoint. And as you can see, we have a new window opening and there are a lot of options that we can use to customize, to set some specific behavior to this breakpoint. So let's go over them one by one. So first we have this field called condition. And here what we can do is we can write a Boolean condition and the breakpoint will only be triggered if this expression evaluates to true. So for instance, here you can see that I have a class where I have a counter. What well, I can say in my condition, I want the counter to be greater than two. This way, whenever the execution reaches the line where the breakpoint is set, the condition will be evaluated and the breakpoint will only be triggered if this evaluates to true. So this can be especially useful if you try to set a breakpoint, maybe in a function of your code that is very generic, very low level. Think of things like uh, network code or JSON decoding. And uh, maybe you want to have the breakpoint to trigger only in a very specific situation. So for instance, for a network request, where well, you could be able to put a condition to filter maybe on the path of the request. And this way, the breakpoint would only trigger in the specific use case that you are interested in, and you would win a lot of time in your debugging session. Now the second one is called ignore and this one, well, it's a little bit the same idea than the condition but maybe like in a more simpler use case is that we can say that for instance we want the breakpoint to be ignored the first time that it is triggered. So this can be useful for instance if you are putting a breakpoint in a method like uh, view will appear because a method like view will appear well it gets called several times over the life cycle of a view controller and maybe you're not interested in what happens in the first call but also only in subsequent calls and this way by saying well I want to ignore the first call you get this ability of not having the breakpoint trigger the first time and you can do it even if there is no like counter in your code so something also super useful then we have this part called action and really there is a lot of possibilities behind it because when I click on it, you can see that I can add actions. So for instance, here the first possibility is a debugger command. So for instance, I can do a PO command to say, okay, well, maybe I want to PO self. So with this, whenever the breakpoint is triggered, the command will be automatically called and evaluated and printed to the console. So this can be super useful when you are in a, we could say, heavy debugging session where you want to run a lot of command a lot of time, where you just don't have to write them one by one over and over again. And we can see that there are actually other methods and one that is also useful is this one called sound. You can play a little sound and this can be interesting for instance if you have a, a base class for all your view controller, well maybe you could implement dnit, put a breakpoint with a sound in dnit and this way whenever a view controller leaves the screen, well if the sound has not been played, you have maybe a hint that probably there is a memory leak because the controller is still in memory even though it's no longer in the navigation stack. So once again, this action can be super useful. And finally, the last one, this little checkbox, you can check it and what it will do, as the name suggests, is that the breakpoint will automatically continue after evaluating actions. So this can be useful when you have set actions on your breakpoint because it will make it so that the actions are run but the execution is not halted. So this way you can use breakpoint as we could say for their side effects to perform some side effects in your debugging session, but you won't have your program be halted and it can be useful if you don't want the execution to halt because while well, it will make your debugging session much more fluid. So this is all the option you can get when you go into the details we could say of a breakpoint, but there's even better stuff. So on Xcode on the left panel here, we have an inspector that is dedicated to breakpoints. So I can click on it. You can see here that I see my breakpoint, but there is also this little plus at the bottom where we can create new breakpoints. So we have several types of breakpoints, and I'm especially interested in this one, symbolic breakpoints. So symbolic breakpoints, they are different than your regular breakpoint. We could say that your regular breakpoint, while well, you set it 
in the line of your code and it's triggered when the execution reaches that line. So we could say that it is uh, maybe tied in to a part of your code, to a line of your code. A symbolic breakpoint is another way to think about it. We could say it's linked to an event. For instance, this symbolic breakpoint I'm creating, it will be triggered whenever a method is called. Now, this only works with method compatible with Objective-C because it uses some runtime features, but still it has some pretty useful use cases. Because let's say for instance that I have a bug in my application. A controller is presented modally out of nowhere and well, this is a bug, so I want to solve it, but I have no idea where is the code that triggered the view controller to be presented. And when you have a big project, well, it can be quite complicated to find the source of the bug. Well, with this kind of breakpoint, you can pinpoint the source of the code super easily. I'm going to add a breakpoint on the call of the method present view controller. So to do it, I start with a minus because in Objective-C, a minus means an instance method. And then I use this syntax, which is, as you can see, heavily inspired by Objective-C. So I put the name of the type and then the name of what Objective-C calls the selector. So the name of the method. Then I add a bracket to close it and that's it. Now I have this symbolic breakpoint. And now whenever a subclass of UIV controller calls the method present view controller, while well, this breakpoint will be triggered, I will have access to the call site, and this way I will be able to find the source of my bug. So this is super useful, and also what's super nice about a symbolic breakpoint is that you can set it for method calls that are defined in your own code, but also in code that you don't own, so code that is inside a binary framework, whether it's a third-party dependency in your app, or just one of the framework of the SDK of iOS. So with a symbolic breakpoint, you can add a breakpoint on a method call for a type that is declared on UIKit, for instance, and it's because it gives you a super powerful tool to debug code that is either a framework from the iOS SDK or a framework in a third party dependency. So you know the drill, if you've enjoyed this video, you can like, comment and subscribe. And also, as you can see, this knowledge about breakpoint is very useful and I think not that many people know about it. So if you've liked the video, please share it around. I'm sure it will also help other developers. Thank you.